A kiss for the eBay. <laughs> so here we are in the Memorial Hall and Board commemorating Regal Day on this fantastic display that these guys put together. Um, we've been having a good chat with Robert and talking about um, families who have lost loved ones, and it's just really fascinating. Good day to you. Well, what a wonderful afternoon we've had here. With all this memorabilia, absolutely superb. But unfortunately, alas, it's time for me to go. Snooker is calling. is five and one fifty one a blind sixty one and four fourteen one and two one does doctor's orders number nine all the sevens seventy seven one and seven, seventeen. Four and seven, forty seven. One and six, sweet sixteen. Conversations with people, getting the veterans here. So, my husband Jonathan, who's been on the stage all night, I'm very proud that he's done what he's done. It's been a phenomenal day. We've had an excellent day for the children. We've had the three schools, junior schools at Burryport, Penbray School, walked in the pouring rain. They arrived here with cuts and bruises as they'd fallen on the way, so they had their own war wounds. They were absolutely drenched, some of them in fancy dress, some of them in costumes. They've made a huge effort. So on behalf of Burryport Rugby Club, on behalf of all of the people here today, I would like to thank the committee of Burryport Rugby Club for all the effort that they've made to make today such a special day for remembering what is such a proud time in all of our lives. So big hand for the, the committee of Rugby Club. People have been anticipating the news of the German surrender. With V Day came, the first glimmer of light returned to normality. For the first time since the beginning of the war, public buildings in London, including Buckingham Palace and the Houses of the Parliament, are floodlit, and the weather forecast was no longer top secret. But not everything changed. 
Many of the restrictions faced by the nation during the war remain. Rashtriya Park became stricter. It was until July 1954 that Rashtriya officially ended with bacon and meat in the last of all. But while Britain was awash with street parties and bonfires to celebrate the E-Day, thousands of miles away, British and Commonwealth Armed Forces were still fighting in Burma, Singapore and Thailand. The Far East campaign was the longest campaign of the war, with continuous fighting. Unlike their comrades fighting in Europe, the British forces had no leave to which they could go home. Meanwhile, back in Europe, finally in a schoolhouse in Leeds, Germany's unconditional surrender was signed at 2.41 p.m. on 7th of May 1945. Active operations with the German forces if you would like to turn 180 degrees towards the Memorial Gardens, you will see the official light day of the V Day torch, which is being lit tonight by two veterans of World War II, Mr. Glenn Jones and Mr. Arthur John Perry, and also a representative from Bariport RFC Juniors, Charlie Davis. So, even dogs were tricked out of bones. Spontaneous celebrations were held as men, women, and children rejoiced. London was the place to be. The taking the brunt of the war for men was only right that this would be the place to celebrate. Anyone who could reach the city did so. Everyone, both in London and at home, sitting by the royal steps, was to be just one man, Mr. Churchill. At 3 o'clock on the 8th of May, Prime Minister Winston Churchill broadcasted to the nation. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, please silence the Prime Minister. We got the water there, which is cool, they don't know. Ah, I'll tell you, I'll talk to you over. All the time you work. Let us remember those who gave their lives at home and abroad, whose sacrifice enables us to enjoy the peace we have today. Let us remember those who came home, wounded physically and mentally, and the friends and family who cared for them. Let us remember those who returned to restore their relationships and rebuild their working lives after years of conflict and turmoil. Let us remember the families that lost husbands, wives, sons, daughters and sweethearts. Let us remember the servicemen and women of other nationalities and faiths from Commonwealth and allied countries who fought, suffered and died during six years of war. Let us remember those in reserved occupations and the brave people who kept us safe on the home front, the doctors and nurses who cared for the wounded the men and women that toiled in the fields, those who worked in the factories, and the air raid wardens, police officers, firemen, ambulance drivers, and the young people of the scouts and guides, who all played such a vital role in the war effort at home. Thank you.
fantastic event and well supported by the community of Pembrey and Burryport. The talent we have to put on an event like this is absolutely phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal. And it's lovely to see the hall full there this evening. We've had children from all three primary schools out there. I, I, I assume there must have been five or six hundred people out there. And this is the absolute topping of the cake, is the lighting of the official VE Day beacon. And I'd like to say thank you to Gareth Gravel who's put in hours and hours and hours of work into this event as long with, along with his wife Kelly who've been doing researching over the internet and they've gone through endless reams of paper so the Green Party won't be happy. So uh, anyway, well done to both of you. Absolutely phenomenal what you've done. Great stuff. The only thanks I would like to give is to the, the veterans who fought before us. All the best. Well done. Thank you.